Hey all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer. For this one, we're going to be covering my top 8 fun and powerful builds to try out for the year 2024. This is a little bit of a different video, including a couple weapons that I haven't covered in a while and a couple new builds like this one. For the first one, we're going to start out with the Blasphemous Blade Death's Poker combination build. Before we continue though, a quick shout out to ExpressVPN. In the description below, there's links to support the channel. You can get three extra months free on a yearly subscription, and you can also get 20% off your order of G Fuel with the code YOURAVERAGEGAMER, all capital letters. And for this build, we're combining faith and intelligence, and it actually works out quite well because we essentially have a fire and frost build. Now you can use these two as a combination move set. Death Spoker and Blasphemous Blade will do that. However, the Ash of War on both, if you're able to switch between the two, can give you a lot of power. By the way, all footage is on New Game Plus 7, max scaling, and one thing I want to mention here is I like the Frost Trail on Death's Poker. You'll see me use that the most because it builds up a lot of Frost, and then using the Blasphemous Blade afterwards to get some extra damage and to reset the Frost proc. At the bottom of the screen, if you saw it by the way, comment the boss that you have trouble with the most. I never really asked that, so I'm curious what main boss in Elden Ring or even side boss gives you the most difficulty, aside from maybe Melania, because that one's kind of obvious. I'm curious to know, so be sure to comment that below. Less so Malakath for me, but as far as Beast Clergyman, that's actually on my list of the most difficult boss fights. I get past him fairly quickly now because I know what builds to use for him, however, I do find his moveset to be, I'll just say it, it's a little bit annoying, it can be frustrating at times. He has attacks that look like they won't hit you, and then he has a lot of attacks where he'll fall back, throw rocks and such, and it makes it a little bit difficult. That's just one of the ones that I occasionally struggle with. As far as this fight though itself, I find the second phase to actually be a lot easier once you get used to him because you can just go under him and avoid most of his attacks, including those frustrating mid-range attacks. Let's jump into equipment for this one. For equipment, we have the Blasphemous Blade and Death's Poker, preferably plus 10. Any seal will do here. We're just using it for buffs. If you want to check out the armor set, the Spellblade set will boost Death's Poker, Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords, Talisman, Urtree's Favorite, plus 2, Faith Tier, Magic Tier, Shop into Stats. For stats, since we're using the Faith tier, we end up with 40 Intelligence, 40 Faith, and then we have 22 Strength and 17 Dexterity, so we can single hand both weapons. And for buffs, we're using Golden Vow and Halashabiri, and as you can see on the boss we took on, that the damage is quite good using this combination build. And the next one up here that we're going to go over is the Great Stars Bonk build, this time a Colt version. Now this is a powerful option that combines Royal Knight's Resolve with the Great Stars in a Colt Affinity to give them around 110 bleed each. This is also a build for posture damage too. If you're looking to get those poise breaks to get in those critical hits, this is something that can definitely work for you as running two of these and then using jump attacks can do decent poise build up and get you the posture break you're looking for. This is a powerful option for most bosses because you're going to get a good amount of bleed out of it. By the way, you can run the white mask if you want to too for some extra damage. I didn't throw that in though, I just chose a different armor set. But you definitely want to have the Raptor's Black Feathers and Claw Talisman to take advantage of the jump attacks. Also, we took on Adula for the first time in a long time. I can't remember the last time this dragon was in a video for me, and I do end up getting hit here. Probably shouldn't have. I ended up missing that jump attack that happens to me sometimes, but we do get the kill there, and we're able to finish off Glintstone Dragon Adula with the Great Stars in a Colt Affinity with solid bleed as well as solid AR. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have two Great Stars, preferably plus 25 in Occult Affinity. The Dragon Communion Seal would actually work well with this. We have a random set of armor on with the Raptor's Black Feathers. We're using Royal Knight's Resolve, by the way. Claw Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Ritual Swords Talisman, Urtree's Favorite, plus two. Faith Tier, we have the Health Tier. Let's jump into stats. The Regenerating Health Tier will go well with uh, using the Ritual Swords Talisman or Ritual Shield Talisman. It can help you get back to full HP, and we're using Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength for this build. We have 60 Arcane and 60 Vigor, 22 Mind, 28 Endurance, and we have 22 Strength, so we can single hand each one, which allows us to dual wield and get a lot of damage out of the Great Stars and Occult Affinity. And the next one we have up here is the Scavenger Dual Threat Bleed build. Now this is a little bit of a different build in terms of the jump attack bleed builds. It actually combines the two. So for our main hand, we have two scavenger curve swords and a cult affinity. We have blood blade on it. And for our off hand, we're using seppuku. 
Now, the big advantage here is that you have the ranged attack in Blood Blade, so you have bleed from a range, and then you can get up close and personal and still get a lot of bleed on your jump attacks, build up some successive attacks, and even use that damage to jump back into Blood Blade. This is also one of those builds where if you get bored with a simple jump attack bleed build where it's the same thing over and over again, you can add more variety to your build, adding something like Blood Blade in, and it gives you a good combination that allows for ranged and up close attacks. Now, interestingly, as far as combining the two, it, it does work out quite well. Now, you're not going to be able to run the Ritual Swords Talisman with this. Keep that in mind because you're not going to be at full HP. You do lose a little bit of HP with Blood Blade, but combining these two and then running successive attack stuff with the Shard of Alexander can turn into a very strong build that does a lot of bleed buildup and a lot of damage. Basically giving yourself a talisman setup where you get the best of both worlds and you're able to just jump back, use Blood Blade anytime you can't use the regular jump attacks or get up close. And then for the jump attack bleed builds itself, you're not sacrificing much. You only don't have Seppuku on one after all, and it still has innate bleed with the occult arcane scaling. Let's jump into equipment for this one. For equipment, we have one Scavenger Curve Sword and Occult Affinity with Blood Blade. The other one with Seppuku, we have the Dragon Communion Seal, White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Claw Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Shard of Alexander, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Faith Tier, Thorny Tier. Let's jump into stats for this one. Now we're using Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength, and as far as our stats go, with the Faith Tier we get to 25, but we have 60 Arcane and 60 Vigor for a well-rounded Scavenger Curve Sword Blade build. A powerful and fun option for a build that you should definitely try out if you're running a bleed build and you want to change it up a little bit. This is definitely one to give a try and one of my favorites. And the next one up here is one that I have not covered in a long time, and that's the Scar Scores Great Swords, which are really powerful. They're strong strength builds, and they scale well with your strength stat and a little bit of intelligence as well. And the Ash of War, Star Caller Cry, the Slam Down does fantastic damage. Another solid option for those that like strength builds, and for the weight, by the way, for about 20 weight or whatever it is, you get to dual wield these, which is awesome too. Get decent damage out of the jump attacks, and you can boost the first part of the Ash of War with the Roar Medallion and Highland Axe passive. All in all, not a bad option. By the way, if you've been following to this point and you're not subscribed to this channel, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the sub button. You're not going to want to miss out. We're going to continue making awesome and fun Elden Ring builds, keeping it interesting, and then covering DLC when that comes out too. And if you've never given the Star Scores Great Swords a try and you like strength builds, definitely give this one a try. You'll have a lot of fun with the Ash of War. A little bit hard to pull off because it has a lengthy Ash of War, but when you do, the slam down is extremely hard hitting. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have the Star Scores Great Sword plus 10. Any seal will do. We have the Highland Axe for its passive. You can check out the armor set there. We have 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, Roar Medallion, Ritual Swords Talisman, Urchery's favorite plus two, Faith tier, Magic tier. Now as far as stats go on this one, we have 60 Vigor, 60 Strength, around 20 Intelligence, and then we got to 25 Faith with the Faith tier, so we can use Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. Give this one a try too. If you're a Strength build, this is something you're definitely going to want to try. By the way, you can get these fairly early. Radon's relatively early in the mid-game. Mid-game at latest, you can grab the Star Scores Greatsword and start running a very strong build for Elden Ring. Next up here, we have the Ruins Greatsword, which you could do with basically the same stats. Now, the Ruins Greatsword is probably one of the better weapons that you can get for New Game and New Game Plus. However, there is a big difference between it and the Star Scores Greatswords in the sense that the main damage component for the Ruins Greatsword is weapon level above everything else. So what this means is this weapon ends up being more powerful on New Game and even just in the New Game Plus than a lot of other options. However, by the time you get to where I'm at here on New Game Plus 7, if you're mainly using the Ash of War itself, the damage is basically capped because it's weapon level beyond anything else and doesn't scale much with your stats. Now keep in mind we're mainly talking about the Ash of War on the weapon, which despite the fact that it looks sort of magic-like, it's actually mostly physical damage. As far as the weapon itself, you can still use it as a bonk stick because it has fantastic strength scaling. 
Overall, one of the more fun weapons to use in Elden Ring. It's something that I enjoyed in my first and second playthrough was checking out the Ruins Greatsword. Another weapon, by the way, if you can take on the duo boss early at Redmain Castle, you can actually grab fairly early game, although it does have some heavy strength requirements. I think you need something like 35 strength or so to two-hand it. I can't remember whether it's 50 or 60. I think it's 50 strength, so you probably need around 35 to two-hand it, which is a decent amount, or maybe 34 or so. Even so, that's a lot early game, but if you can get a lot into strength as far as your points go, you can run the Ruins Greatsword early in Elden Ring and end up taking on a lot of the bosses and doing really great damage as you upgrade the weapon and get more damage out of the weapon level and you have to worry less about your stats. On a random note, I actually got this, well, completely random here, on a randomizer playthrough as one of my first weapons, and I ended up running it through New Game, and it was, it was fantastic throughout the entire New Game for the randomizer because of the fact that after I was able to get it to around plus seven or so, the damage on base game was just fantastic. Didn't have to worry too much about the scaling and the stats and stuff and instead just upgraded the weapon consistently and were able to hit stuff really hard and then use that power flash of war. Alright, that's probably one too many fantastics, but overall, being able to upgrade this weapon is a huge benefit without having to invest in much else. By the way, when you're using the Ruins Greatsword, don't worry too much about intelligence. The scaling is very low both on the Ash of War and the weapon itself. Yeah, running intelligence for the Ruins Greatsword is almost a waste of investment. It actually does more for the Star Scores Greatsword. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have the Ruins Greatsword, plus 10, preferably. Any seal will do. We're using it for buffs. You want to check out the armor set. We have 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Shield Talisman, Ritual Swords Talisman, Urchery's Favorite, plus 2, Faith Tier. We have the Charge Tier. I didn't end up using the Charge Attack, but the Special Charge Attack is pretty cool. Let's jump into stats. Yeah, the Charge Attack on the Ruined Greatsword has a special slam down with a little bit of extra added magic and physical damage at no FP cost to you. Now for this, we're using Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength and same stats. We have 60 Vigor, 60 Strength, and 20 Intelligence for a well-rounded build. And next up, we have a Combination build which uses the Fire Butcher, essentially, which is the Butchering Knife and Flame Art Affinity with Flaming Strike, and then Black Flame Incantations with the God Slayer Seal. And since we're mainly boosting fire and physical damage here, we can get up close and do a lot of damage with the Butchering Knife using Flaming Strike. It has a lot of AR. I think it has around 800 or so, if not just a little bit over it. And then we can throw in Black Flame Incantations for even more damage. Yeah, if you're noticing this in a lot of my videos, Flaming Strike usually makes an appearance. The reason it makes an appearance is because I absolutely love the Ash of War. I love the way the Fire Coat looks. I love the damage that you get from it. And then, of course, being able to run it in Flame Art as a Faith build gives you a lot of variety. For those that don't know, Faith on like Magic has a lot more damage types. You can end up getting Fire Damage, Holy Damage, Lightning Damage. There's a lot you can do with Faith. It does give you a versatile build option as far as where your stats are put at least. You could change up Talismans and change your build on the fly for a ton, not a ton, but uh, three different damage types plus physical damage. So a lot of damage types for Elden Ring. Faith has that variety that Magic really doesn't. That being said, is magic a great damage type? It is, and you can be really powerful. I always say that mage builds are easy mode. However, faith definitely wins in terms of versatility goes. Let's jump into equipment for this build and setup. For equipment, we have the Flame Art Butchering Knife, plus 25 preferably. We have the God Slayer Seal if you want to check out the armor set. We have Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Shield Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Faith Tier, Fire Tier, jump into stats for this build and as you can see here we're using golden vow flame grant me strength the black flame fireball and scouring black flame to mix it up we have 60 faith we have 23 mind 28 endurance we have 60 vigor if you're wondering why we have the extra dex points it's so that you can run the next build that's on this too and that's a sacred relic build and we're going to be jumping into that now and this is one for holy damage it's also faith based with the sacred relic sword and we're going to show off what that can do to mobs as well this will be a relatively quick boss fight. If you didn't know this, by the way, all the death birds will take additional damage from Holy, but we have another clip here where we're going to show this off on mobs too because the Sacred Relic Sword is awesome for that. As far as the death birds go, though, they stand no chance against the Sacred Relic Sword and the fact that it's all faith scaling on the Ash of War gives you a lot of damage too. Let's jump into equipment for this one. 
For equipment, we have the Sacred Relic Sword, plus 10, preferably. Any seal will do, but the Urchery Seal would probably fit this well. Uh, we have a random set of armor on. We want to check that out. Sacred Scorpion Charm, Ritual Shield Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Faith Tier, Holy Tier, jump into stats. And for stats, it's the same stats as the last build. We have 70 Faith with the Faith Tier, 24 Dexterity so we can wield the weapon, 16 Strength so we can two-hand it, 28 Endurance, 23 Mind, 60 Vigor. And we're using Golden Vow and Howl of Shabiri to boost the powerful Holy Damage Ash of War that we're going to show off, by the way, here on mobs and how much damage it can do. Anybody that's done the uh, Rune Farm knows how good this weapon is against mobs. It can make your life a lot easier. And now we're going to let him call over all of his buddies here so we can use Waves of Gold and show that off. And I believe it misses one of the ones. Actually, he came from in front of me, so it wouldn't have hit him regardless. But you can see there we're able to wipe out pretty much all of them on screen with just two uses of Waves of Gold. Yeah, if you're ever having an issue in Elden Ring with any of the mobs in the game or you want to do that rune farm at uh, Mogwin's Palace, this is definitely the weapon to go for that. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. It just does a ton of damage to them because of the fact that it has such a wide area of effect. Now, the next one up here is the last one and one of the most fun ones, and that is the Black Flame Naginata build. The Naginata is really good in flame art. It actually is very good with Black Flame Tornado, which scales purely with your faith stat. But overall, the fact that we also have a stick that uh, pokes and does fire damage, that's a plus two. And you can see here I'm combining in Black Blade to give it a little bit of a combination build between Black Flame Tornado and Black Blade. And by the way, the debuff on Black Blade will stack with the percentage damage you're also getting from any Black Flame incantation. So it's pretty solid to actually mix these two. And if you haven't used Black Flame Tornado, it's one of the most fun Ashes of War to pull off in Elden Ring. And Black Blade itself is a fun incantation to use too. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have the Naginata and Flame Art Affinity with Black Flame Tornado. We have the Erd Tree Seal. You can check out the armor set there. Fire Scorpion Charm. Phlox Canvas Talisman. Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Faith Tier, Fire Tier. Keep in mind this is a combination build. Let's jump into stats. And for stats, the same as the last two, you can do all of these three with the same identical stats. We have 60 Vigor, 24 Dexterity, 16 Strength, 70 Faith, and we were able to get a lot of damage out of the Black Blade Incantation, as well as Black Flame Tornado. And as usual, Golden Val. And then if you're actually using Black Blade, you can throw in Hala Shabiri. Probably would have been a better buff, but since I was doing fire and physical damage, I added in Flame Grammy Strength. Thanks for watching this one. I'm definitely glad you guys stuck around to the end. If you did stick around to the end, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. By the way, if I sound a little bit off in this video, I've been having a little bit of a cold the past week. I think the weather finally got to me. Tis the season for that, I guess. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching this one. I really appreciate everybody that's been subbing to the channel lately. A lot of new people as well. Definitely comment the hardest boss you have trouble with. And be sure to hit the sub button.